All right, so it is like four or five days later. Got some parts for the agility. Going to bring it down the shop and, and take care of it rather than doing it on the tailgate. All right, so get to take this magneto off. Uh, 14 millimeter socket gets it. Impact gun helps an awful lot. Just pick this thing up, used off of eBay. Gotta have a flywheel puller. I don't know the dimensions on this. I've had it forever. Uh, I'm sure you could look it up. Uh, make sure you thread the thing all the way in. Um, I have been lazy before, only a couple turns. It'll pop out, so you gotta thread it in. Um, yeah, I, I've heard a lot of people, you know, don't use an impact gun on crankshaft stuff, but meh. It'll be fine, trust me. Never had an issue, um, but I like to crack it loose by hand just because I love busting my knuckles. Uh, so, pull the stator out of there. You've got two 8mm, um, or actually four altogether. I'm working on the pulse coil up top there. Um, so, two on the stator, two on the pulse coil, and uh, if you unplug it, just follow the wire up uh, into the body of the bike. Normally, it's a zip tie, and it pulls right out of there. Take a look at this thing. Man, yeah, that's not gonna spark. So we'll pop the new one in there. Wanna put your rubber grommet in on the case first. Um, and then the stator kinda in its home. The wires kinda go off to the right there. Just make sure you don't pinch them. Lock tight your bolts. Um, I think this is guy's problem last time why it fell off and ultimately why I had to uh, put the stock fan on and destroy the stator. Um, pulse coil on these, you do, there's not like a true gap on it. Um, well, there's not like an adjustable gap, you just kind of bend the thing, but make sure you can stick a credit card in there between the nub on the stator and um, the um, metal on the pulse coil itself. That's what's picking up to tell the motor when to spark. Um, so a credit card I think is like 30 thou, um, and that's just enough. I did have to bend this thing up actually. It was, it was actually hitting. So um, just, you know, do it carefully. But um, keyway goes in that slot. It's on the crankshaft. I didn't get a good um, uh, like a, a video of that, but just make sure it lines up and that's still in there because it'll rotate and then it'll be out of electrical time. Um, you know, a certain amount of foot pounds on this. I'm sure, you can look it up in a manual, but if you uh, ugga duggas with the uh, impact gun, um, run your 8 millimeter bolts in that are the proper length. I already verified that. there it's it so I put this top end all back together um, just so it wouldn't get any moisture in there or anything like that but we're gonna rip it all back apart we have a head gasket that needs to be uh, swapped out um, and also a dowel pin that's missing so I ordered both of those um, and we're gonna make sure it's all back together correctly um, again from the previous video you have an, uh, a rubber o-ring on a carb elbow uh, that you want to pay special attention to um, and take off your plastic shrouds the head cover four eight millimeter bolts right there that bolt has a ground wire on it very important so don't forget that um, from there you've got your cam chain tensioner. I've already loosened up um, the top of it. There's like a spring retainer. Um, I have a better shot of that cam chain tensioner in the previous video, but um, everything's loose, so we're just running bolts off. Um, you have eight millimeter um, stud or head stud bolts here, washers behind them. Get those. They are important for oil pressure as well, um, so don't forget them. And there you can pull off your um, rocker assembly, the cam, cam chain, Just let it dangle there. Um, you have your two 8mm long socket caps that are on the, the right hand side there, pull both of those out. Um, and then from there you can slide the whole head off.
Yeah, so this head gasket, you know, it the whole head wasn't tight enough, so it blew out all the uh, Teflon on it. I mean, it's not common for it to come off when you pull the, the head off or separate it, but, you know, I, I could just tell the thing was leaking. I mean, it wasn't on there with any torque whatsoever. Um, so we'll go ahead and replace the base gasket as well. Um, so we'll pop a new one of those on there. It is paper, so you'll want to be careful with it. It only goes on one way. Um, there's a longer tab that goes towards the top um, where the oil passage travels down. You see that little cutout on the left hand side. Um, like I was saying, the dowel pins do support that oil pressure. Basically, the, the pressure is coming out of that little cutout there on the left going into the dowel pin section and get pushed up to the top of the motor. Um, so like I was saying, the, the dowel pin that was missing is the return side, so it's not as big of a deal, but you, know, it, you don't want to be losing oil anywhere. Um, so. Didn't take the piston off, so got to sneak the gasket past that. The cylinder is not quite as easy as to, easy to put on as a two-stroke, um, but basically you want to start the open end of the top ring and kind of push that ring with your fingernail uh, enough to get that passed and the second with the same. A lot of wiggling and jiggling. Um, there are ring compressors that you can buy. I find them just not really all that useful. Um, there have been instances where I've had to use it, um, you know, on bigger um, displacement motors like a 150 or 170 where those rings are pretty stout um, you kind of need it but uh, in this case you know something that's been ran before it's, it's just a small little big poor kit small little <laughs> um, but yeah it, it can be done by hand so right here I didn't get footage of it but the um, exhaust valve is leaking so this right here I'm spinning the valve it's kind of like a quick lap of it so the way I found out it was leaking, um, and you can do this for any head, spray brake parts cleaner um, in either orifice, the, the intake or the exhaust, um, and they're closed when you have it off your hand. It shouldn't leak. If it leaks at all, you've got you know a leak, um, and that's no good for compression, no good for starting. So uh, to spin it real quick, most of the time it's a minor imperfection, just the metal running past each other will we'll clear it up. Um, so just a quick thing there, but... Um, yeah, just putting all the dowel pins back in, the cam chain guide as well down the bottom. Put plenty of motors together without, or not all the way, but, you know, put the head on and went, oh, geez, what's this? Cam, cam chain guide. So remember that. Um, then your head gasket, we get a brand new one. And the head on. This can be a tough part getting that cam chain, you know, up uh, protruding out of the, the head. Um, the magnet definitely helps, but I normally just do it with my finger. I never have a magnet handy for whatever reason, but it was a little bit of a time saver. So, um, again, you have two lines in the cam chain or in the cam, and you want the two lobes facing down when you put this on. The motor's got to be at top dead center, um, and sometimes this takes a couple of tries, um, but to know that it's at top dead center, you have to look on the flywheel. Uh, on the side of the brass of the fly flywheel, there's a T mark that's going to line up with a notch on the left hand side of the, the case. I'm going to attempt to show it to you here in a second, but it's uh, it's pretty dark in there. So cam lobes down, the two lines are basically flush with the head, um, and then you line up the T mark. So 
It's uh, on these bikes, not that it's not super crucial, but if you get one tooth off, it's not going to bend the valve, but it's not going to run right. Um, but basically, make sure you've got it you know, close or you've got it spot on, I, I should say. You know, if it's cocked a little bit, I've noticed some there just it, like it. You can't go to the next tooth, but it's not perfect. Um, it's normally just fine. Um, but once you've got everything torqued on there, before you even set the valves, just rotate it over a couple times. Uh, make sure that you know it's consistent at least. Um, so the head bolts again. There's a torque somewhere. I promise. Uh, it's probably like 20 foot pounds, maybe a little less. Maybe a little more somewhere in that ballpark, um, but just been doing it for so long. You got to torque them in a, a, a cross pattern um, very evenly, uh, and then from there you want to uh, put in your um, eight millimeter socket cap, those long ones to kind of seal up that cam chain side. pop your cam chain tensioner back in. You want to put the two 8mm bolts uh, in all the way. Obviously there's a gasket that goes in between there. Um, I think you might have noticed earlier that it uh, hadn't gotten destroyed when I took it off. So that's good. Uh, get those nice and snug. And then from there we're going to put in the spring and then also that top 10 millimeter socket cap um, in there. And if you listen real close, you can hear the cam chain tensioner go out, you kind of like go down each tooth. So we're going to set the valves. Um, you don't really need a special tool to do this, but it does really help. Um, this thing I'm using here is super helpful. Um, these are 9mm with a square tip. So I like to set these around 5 thou. Um, they do not need to be perfect, trust me. Um, but you typically want to set them a little bit bigger. Um, I normally put a 6 in there. Um, and with the exhaust, if it's not a big bore, I do try to get them a little bit tighter, but basically you've got to have clearance between that rock or rocker arm assembly and the tip of the valve or else, especially when this thing heats up, it's not going to run because the valve's hanging open and it's leaking. Um, so you need to crack the um, nut loose and then you can use like a pair of needle nose to adjust it. But that being said, uh, you do the same bolt to intake and exhaust. Uh, exhaust 5 thou is just fine. So uh, do it to both, and you know as long as you've got clearance there, it's gonna fire up. It may sound like a sewing machine, but you know it, it, at least it's not hanging open, burning up the valve at that point. On a Chinese bike, it really should be done like every thousand miles. So like you said, rotate this thing over. Um, and to make sure that it is consistent. Your marks line up flush against the head. And then over on this side, hit a little tab on the motor that's uh, the aluminum that's poking out. Line that up with the teeth. You can't see it, but you gotta do it. So pop your shrouds back on and start buttoning everything back up. So I just do this, you don't have to do this, I just had one bike that leaked a long time ago around this valve cover, the guy was so mad about it, tiniest little dribble, um, that I always put a thin layer of silicone on there. Um, the rubber gaskets do tend to flatten out, um, 
yeah, it's just, it's not worth stocking them. So, little air of that, it'll pop right off. Um, you know, and then you never have a leak and anybody's screaming at you. It's your own bike. You really don't have to do it. I mean, if it's drip dropping on the ground, by all means. Uh, but there's no pressure there. It's just really any accumulation that might seep past it. Um, once the motor has seen some time, that O-ring will flatten out eventually. So again, don't forget your ground strap. Um, do it first so I don't pop all four bolts back in. up my stator again. Stators come in a ton of different poles and wire configurations. I mean it's it's got to run as long as you've got two components come out of that thing. Um, if you've got a pulse and you've got an exciter, the two bullet connectors, it's going to run. Um, some are grounded to the motor and then run through the ground strap. This one right here has a separate ground wire that runs to the main harness, but um, the pulse and the exciter. So pulse is normally blue and yellow, um, and sometimes it will go blue and yellow to red and white. Those are common pulse coils. So that's, that's the little black box that we screwed in. Um, and the exciter side that's making the energy is almost always black and red or red with a black tracer but um, a lot of different variations when in doubt you know you can just kind of use continuity to check it out um, tons of wiring diagrams online but common pulse like i said is blue and yellow to red and white um, if it's not blue and yellow to blue and yellow um, and exciter is normally um, red and black so let's get this exhaust back on um, and then from there we give this thing a fire. All bikes have a gasket between the muffler and the, the uh, exhaust itself. Um, the stock ones normally on a Chinese bike will just stay right in there. We can reuse them a million times, um, but sometimes they fall out. So you definitely want to make sure it's in there. There's a little bit of a recess in the head. Um, I didn't get any footage of this. Um, this one actually has like a mesh gasket that's stuck pretty good to it. I, I assume it came with the exhaust, um, but we'll have to see if it leaks any. I highly doubt it. Um, these bolts on the bottom here, um, on a new bike, you got to tighten these things up. The exhausts on Chinese bikes fall off all the time. Uh, and I just don't know what the deal is. Somebody's not tightening them up enough. But um, anyways, uh, two in the bottom and two on the side is your typical configuration for any exhaust on any scooter. <laughs> So this is a little bonus, uh, his speedometer does not work. Um, on these agilities, you need to take this back panel off to do a lot between taking off switches, um, replacing headlights, very common with these bikes. Um, there is three screws and this thing's going to come right off in our hands. So Phillips heads on either side and then there's one center one. 
Um, the agility is not like most bikes. Most bikes, the front panel comes off, but on this one, the back one comes off, then the front. Um, so, a little bit different, if you've never done it. And just as I suspected, his speedometer cable has came loose, fallen down a little bit, and it's just disconnected. So, easy fix. as you saw just snaps in up the top and we'll put our bolts back in her screws back Well, it's a wee bit icy outside, but we've got to take it for a little test drive, make sure everything's doing well. Seems to be, though. So, if you enjoyed this little two-part series, uh, what are you doing? Come on, like, subscribe, and uh, share with your friends, and there'll be more to come.